Welcome to the Osmo Early Bird Podcast. It's your old pal Emac coming to you with one Adam Ship, my money share, as we get ready for a Tuesday slate. All teams are in action. However, there is one two o'clock game, the Angels and the Rangers. It's Joe Palumbo and question mark. So you can look back at the DFS strategy show or check us out in Osmo Slack to find out what we're doing for that solo game. We will have rankings, grades, and projections. If you haven't signed up for rankings, grades, and projections, you can use the promo code EARLYBIRD, all one word, to get 50% off any one-month package. Adam, I got that one in early. How are you doing? Doing doing well. Um, I'll be better if, as we're doing the podcast, Brendan McKay starts to you know throw strikes and not give up home runs. But uh, other than that, doing doing pretty well. Yeah, hat tip to uh, Chris Randone. He called out the uh, Tom Murphy home run in the home run contest. Good for him. Uh, also, if you want to catch him, I did hear this is uh, the next episode of Bachelor in Paradise. Now, he's not on it, but he was on it last year or two years ago. He uh, they, he had just got married to the, the girl that he, he met on the show, and their wedding's going to be on ABC. Uh, they're going to cut into it for part of the Bachelor in Paradise, Adam. We nice. move in a different world than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's doing Good Morning America with Michael Strahan. His wedding's on ABC. Meanwhile, we are uh, we live close to D.C. Does that count for points for us? <laughs> I don't think our Q score is quite as high as his, but there we are. There we are. All right, 14 gamer here. Of course, we are going um, by game, by pitcher. We'll talk through them all, then we'll circle back and uh, – Talk about the uh, pricing as uh, as it relates to the specific sites. We'll use uh, DK kind of as our barometer, but uh, we'll go back and talk about Yahoo and FanDuel, um, etc. There, uh, Adam, if there's anything that pops when you see it, just go ahead and call it out uh, from that standpoint. But we got a lot to cover, so let's jump on in. Our first game here is the Washington Nationals in Pittsburgh for the second game of their series. Looks like it's going to be in the low 80s. Uh, probably a 45 to 50 percent chance of scattered showers in the area. Humidity in is about uh, 70, 80 percent. Of course, that's because of the potential rain in the area. So definitely keep an eye on that one as we get closer to lock because we do have Steven Strasburg and uh, Chris Archer going into this one. Strasburg 10,400, Chris Archer 9,300. Are you telling me that uh, that Sunny Gray is only 400 more than Archer? Where's where's the love for Sunny Gray? Yeah, it's pretty absurd that we still can't get Sunny Gray to 10K, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, Archer here, you know, tough matchup against the Nats. He's been not great this season. The strikeout stuff is fine, but walks too many guys, gives up too many home runs, and now you're not even getting a mid-range price tag. He's been interesting at times this year just because the salary gives you upside because of the strikeouts, but you're paying for the strikeouts and you're not getting any sort of discount for the home runs and the walks. So really tough to get to Archer. Strasburg, a bit more appealing here, but it is a tough strikeout matchup against Pittsburgh. PNC has actually been a top 10 park for hitters as far as runs scored, run scoring goes this season. So not the great pitcher's park that a lot of people think it is, especially this time of the year. Um, I think that Strasburg's fine. I'd prefer him over Archer, but still a pretty tough matchup. All right. Uh, that's kind of a... We've got a lot, a long way to go. So we'll, 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 again, we'll look back and see where these guys go. But these are the benchmarks, the leaders in the clubhouse here. Uh, continuing along to our next game, we've got Brad Keller, seventy five hundred, going against Dylan Bundy, seventy four hundred. Each team has a four point eight implied run total. Again, this one will be in the low to mid eighties, about seventy five percent humidity, uh, chance of scattered showers in the area. That's kind of what the Midwest, or probably the uh, the East Coast, Mid Atlantic, is looking like for Tuesday. Adam, we know that Brad Keller does not give up a lot of power. The batters of Birdland are not horrendous, but I'm really going to land on the side of Keller here. The question is, are there going to be enough strikeouts at 7,500 to have him on the radar for you? No, I don't really see getting to Keller. I think if I were to go to a pitcher from this game, I'd have more interest in Bundy just because his strikeout stuff is better. But I don't think I'll really get to either guy because if you look at pitchers priced around them, there's just more appealing options and better matchups. And they're right next to each other over there. 30s to really warrant a lot of conversation until we get through the remainder of the slate. Reminder, Yahoo is the presenting sponsor of the uh, the, uh, Early Bird Podcast here. If you have not yet signed up for Yahoo, go to any of the Spotlight Hearers and Stacks articles. Those will be on screen. One stack per slate. 
general rule of thumb that I do, and I try not to talk about Coors Field. So uh, I try to make it worthwhile and give a few nuggets here and there. But in the third paragraph, you can get the link and instructions and promo code on how you can sign up and get $30 Yahoo with your initial DFS deposit. Uh, you get those in YSRPs, Yahoo Sports Rewards Points, and they are available for immediate use into entry into any contest, and they do have that management fee Free contest. Uh, they run it uh, five or six days a week here for baseball. They've also dropped a one million dollar NFL contest. Twenty five dollars to get in, but it's a ten entry max, no management fee. So uh, earmark some of your funds for that one. Adam, uh, you kind of mentioned a little bit on Bundy here. I I'm assuming you're really not excited about many of the Royals bats just because they have been so thin lately. If you were to pick, do a little home run hunting, would it be Solaire? Would it be Dozier? What What do you think for a little home run hunting here? Yeah, Solaire and Dozier are both in really good home run spots. Uh, tons of right-handed power. They both have ISOs approaching 300 against right-handed pitching, and it's a favorable park for home runs. The problem is just that on DraftKings, they're super expensive with uh, Solaire coming in at 5,200, Dozier coming in at 5K. A little bit more affordable on FanDuel, 3,900 for Dozier, 3,600 for Solaire. Um, I don't have the Yahoo pricing in front of me, but I, I assume DraftKings is going to be the least appealing place to get to them. Yeah, and just the only reason I wanted to call that out is Bundy, of course. Um, Solaire's 27, so he's kind of out of the question. And then get the right position there for uh, uh, where? Hunter Dozier's 21. So kind of expensive. I did want to call it out just because uh, over the last two seasons, Dylan Bundy has allowed the most home runs in the league. Uh, since the beginning of last year, 2.3 home run per nine against varieties in to my lefties tab uh, against lefties it is 1.72 so just calling that out but it looks like the algorithms have caught on to that one continuing along here our next game we have Shane Bieber getting the opportunity to go against a pitcher instead of the designated hitter as he and the rest of Cleveland is going to be in Minnesota or Minnesota. they're going to be in City Field taking on the Mets you have Steven Matz at 6,900 Bieber at 11,600 Intriguing matchup for both sides. More for the price on Mats, but Bieber, the potential strikeout upside. Uh, we know that McNeil's out for the rest of the year. Cano's done. Uh, so we're really looking at Joe Panic. Uh, well, he doesn't strike out a ton. He is going to be uh, up there with his wiffle ball bat, uh, batting second. So we're really only worried about Alonzo, Conforto, and Ramos. So I'm liking Shane Bieber. Uh, where do you think about uh, the Biebs compared to... Uh, uh, Strasburg. I think Bieber, if he's going to be low owned, I'll be interested. It's not a good matchup against the Mets, but he is just good enough. He doesn't really need good matchups. He does well against pretty much everyone. Has the highest strikeout percentage on the slate at 30.9%. Has the lowest, second, one of the lowest walk percentages at 5.1%. Best K minus BB percentage at 25.8. Best Sierra at 3.32. Just very clearly has been the best pitcher on the slate this season. And with his price tag being more expensive, DraftKings and being close to Kershaw, I think maybe you once again see low ownership on Bieber, which is something that has been very profitable in tournaments this year. All right. And then on the other side, Steven Matz, just purely a price play at 6,900. Uh, thoughts on him going against uh, Cleveland, who will be without their designated hitter? Um, it's... Just a really tough matchup still. Not a lot of strikeouts in the lineup. Uh, replacing the designated hitter with Beaver, obviously. And his salary is okay, but there's just pitchers around him that I think are, are better. Let's continue along. San Diego Padres continuing their series in Cincinnati. Cal Quantrill, 7,300, going against the aforementioned Sonny Gray, 9,700. Uh, the Padres are coming in with a 3.8 implied run total, 4.8. Implied total there for uh, the Reds. They do have uh, Jesse Winker is dinged up. Nick, Nick Senzel was a late scratch on Monday. They, uh, of course, do not have Yasiel Puig anymore. But their lineup's not too shabby. They've got uh, Aristides Aquino, who has uh, been amazing from a home run perspective. A fantastic terror. Josh Van Meter, league starting to figure him out. But uh, he still has a little bit of pop. Eugenio Suarez is in there. They just picked up Freddie Galvis off of waivers. 
Uh, and then you should see Tucker Barnhart. So not the easiest of matchups, not the easiest of environments. We're looking at a five to seven mile an hour wind in the Great American Ballpark going out to left field. Should be in the mid 80s. Wait for it. Humidity around 70 percent. You've heard that a bunch of times from me already today. What do you want to do with Mr. Sonny Gray and Cal Quantrill? Yeah, give me tons of Sonny Gray here. That goes without saying, I think, but a nice matchup against the Padres. Not quite as good a strikeout matchup as it has been for a lot of the season because they traded Fran Mil Reyes to the Indians and then Fernando Tatis got hurt. But I also am not going to act like Tatis being out of the lineup is bad for Gray. It takes a 30% strikeout guy out, but it also takes out one of their best hitters. You're suddenly getting a, a more watered-down version of the Padres, and Gray just has really good strikeout stuff. He has the second-highest strikeout percentage on the season at 28.7%. But the other thing that stands out is that he's got an elite ground ball percentage, which is why he's been able to pitch in Citizens Bank Park as his home park and still give up below one home run per nine innings. He has a 50 coming into this game. He has a 52.6% uh, ground ball percentage, which is obviously really, really good. And it's unusual to get a pitcher with his strikeout stuff that also has that kind of ground ball stuff. So it's multiple ways for him to get good outcomes from an at bat, you know, whether it's a ground ball or a strikeout, he's underpriced in my opinion, hundred, especially in this spot. So um, I'll have a lot of Sonny Gray again. All right. Uh, the Padres are fourth in fourth lowest in the league with an 86 WRC plus against righties. That's weighted runs created plus, which is an advanced metric that neutralizes ballpark factors and creates a league wide scoring baseline of 100. So that means they score 14% less than the average team. And again, that is the fourth lowest mark against righties. They also have the second highest strikeout rate uh, against righties. That's 26.3%. Uh, again, this is just active roster. doesn't mean uh, it's the projected starting lineup or anything like that, but did want to call out that those things are going to be in Sonny Gray's favor. Uh, Cal Quantrill at 7,300. Is he one of those uh, potential mid-tier guys you're considering over Steven Matz? No, I don't think so. He's actually been pretty decent since coming back from AAA, but not one of the guys in this park against the Cincinnati team that doesn't strike out a lot that I'm, I'm super interested in. All right, then let's go on to our next matchup. You have Aaron Nola uh, going into Boston. A couple of sites I saw had uh, Brian Johnson as the starter for Boston. Let's see what DK says. DK does have Brian Johnson as well. So we will assume it is going to be him going against Aaron Nola. Doesn't feel like a great matchup on either side. Nolo, of course, talented pitcher, but I really don't want to go against Boston. They have uh, been one of the best offenses in the season, despite not having the best uh, record and probably not actually making the playoffs. I believe last time I checked, they've scored like the third most runs in the season or on the season. Uh, on the other side, Brian Johnson. Yeah, give me the Philly hitters. So nothing here from a pitching perspective. Do you want to dismiss Nola that quickly? I don't think I'll get to Nola. It's just a really tough matchup. Boston right now has a five and a half implied run total. Not a lot of strikeouts in the lineup. Nola is a really good pitcher, but I don't think you're getting enough of a discount when he's still more expensive than Sonny Gray and he's facing the Red Sox, while Gray, who has better strikeout numbers, is facing the Padres. All right. On Yahoo, Nola is 43. That's the lowest he has been since July 18th when he was 44 against the Dodgers. So interesting there and he had a couple other low ones where he was kind of struggling and that was when he started to turn things around and the price went back up but uh 43 we can consider him there all depends on lineup construction it's not going to be an easy matchup but he is priced much more appropriately there for the matchup than he is on DraftKings. on to our next one here we don't yet have a starter what do you got if anything for seattle and tampa bay i'm seeing it's going to be one of their lefties i'm I think it's Tommy Malone, and then I think the – who's their next one? Uh, not LeBlanc. I'm blanking. But anyway, they've got – basically they have four lefties. Uh, but Malone uh, should be their long reliever. I don't know who's going to open for them, but they're only going to go an inning or two, and it looks like potentially Jalen Beeks on the other side. Could we have the two, two teams that love the opener play openers against each other with probable long relievers at them? Yeah, but Beeks actually started his last time out, which makes him really interesting here because he threw 92 pitches in that outing and he's 4,400 on DraftKings. So there's potential for Beeks to just be like the highest on pitcher on the slate. And he is 27 on Yahoo. So there we are. I think even if you just get four innings out of him at those price points, it's reasonable. The Mariners uh, have been 
a bit of a mess uh, since they've lost. I mean, if you think about it, you know, they traded away their, their be- two of their best hitters in the offseason. Then they lo- uh, traded away Jay Bruce. They traded away, um, I forget the other one. They Obviously, they lost Nelson Cruz. And then they got Mitch Hanniger and Ryan Healy on the DL. So they, they're like down to third stringers seemingly at most positions here. And uh, Kyle Seeger playing a very prominent role lately. Not going to scare us, Adam. Not going to scare us. So we'll have to give a strong consideration there to Jalen Beeks. You guys will have to check it out on the DFS strategy show. That'll be on at 930 Tuesday morning. And we should have more clarification there if Beeks is going to be starting or uh, seeing an opener in front of him. Uh, any interest on the Mariners side here? Tommy Malone is uh, 7,800. It's going to be hard to get there. No, I don't think so. There's just a couple of pitchers in that range that I like better. And then obviously if Beeks is starting, he's, he's the better option. Okay. Let's get on to, God, we got like two thirds of the slate to go. Miami at Atlanta. Elisa Hernandez, 5,500 on DK going against Dallas. Kai Colt, 7,900. Kaiko gets the amazing matchup against the Marlins. Marlins coming in with a 3.6 implied run total. Again, this one is in Atlanta where it's 84 degrees, 60% humidity. A slight breeze coming in four to seven miles an hour from center field there. Uh, on the other side, Atlanta, 6.4 implied a run total already. Adam, that could go up. Uh, I'm liking Keiko. He should have, uh, he, he's going to be, what, about a minus 300? Uh, if that goes up anymore, might get to minus 325, minus 350 on the the uh, potential win for Atlanta. Of course, that doesn't mean Keiko's necessarily going to get it, but I do like factoring it in when it gets to be that high of of a rate, especially for someone that should go far enough into the game to uh, qualify for it. I'm assuming you're just going to cross off Hernandez, but how do you feel about Keiko 7,900 against these semi-punchless Marlins who don't strike out a lot? I think Keiko's an okay option. Um, still not my favorite. He's not very good. Um, the Marlins, of course, aren't very good either, but they are a tougher matchup for left-handed pitchers than righties because of how right-handed heavy they are. Uh, Brian Anderson, Garrett Cooper are both capable hitters. Starlin Castro is tough to strike out. Um, so it's it's not the it, it's a good matchup, but it's uh, for for someone like Keiko, I think he's priced probably where he should be. Um, I could see getting to him in some lineups, but probably not a, pri- a priority for, for me. I want to point out you call the former Cy Young winner not a good pitcher. What are we on? That's Rick Porcello's corner, Adam. No need to put Dallas Keuchel there. Uh, we we <laughs> uh, the Marlins striking out uh, with their active roster twenty one point eight percent, so a little bit higher than I had expected, but that's still eight. I was expecting them to be in the bottom eight. They are just in the bottom twelve, so uh, a little bit of nuance there but not quite as deep in the hole as I had thought. Again, a lot will be depending on their lineup. Uh, On DK, they have uh, John Birdie is the only person. uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Brian Anderson. Only two more than 4,000. They have Lewis Brinson at two. Jorge Alfaro at 3,300. Neil Walker, 3,600. Yeah, trouble. Uh, Moving along here, Millie Wake, St. Louis. Uh, We have uh, Gio Gonzalez at 8,100 going against the Cardinals. Michael Waka. 4,700, Adam. 4.9 implied run total there for the Brewers. Uh, Waka is risky. He is uh, not as, uh, you know, the injuries have really sapped him. He's not nearly as good as he was when he first uh, came up from uh, the minors and had a nice couple years there. But he should go 85 to 90 pitches potentially. His last three starts have been 80, 92, and 73. What are your thoughts with Michael Waka on DK at 4,700? He's not very good. The matchup's really bad. Um, if Jalen Beeks isn't starting and we don't have that very easy play, then I guess I start to become somewhat interested just because he is so cheap. But if we assume, if Beeks is going, then I would just rather get to Beeks. Um, tons of left-handed power in the Milwaukee lineup. Waka just is really bad. All right. He has faced the Brewers twice this season. He's gone 12 total innings, allowed 12, uh, probably 14 base runners. Only three earned runs, two came or two home runs, uh, but that of course does not guarantee anything because he, if you look at this game log, has uh, in his last six games has two negative performances uh, and only one double digit fantasy performance. So careful what you look at, but it's price, 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 price. That's what it's going to come down to. And if you can luck into getting the correct stack or a double dong with upgrading your uh, batters with that uh, saved 
salary cap, you will be in the catbird seat. Gio Gonzalez going against a host of righties. How do you feel about that? Gonzalez, Gonzalez has moments, but I think uh, I think his time has passed. Yeah, he's just more expensive than I want to pay. It's not an easy matchup against the Cardinals either. You obviously have some right-handed power with Goldschmidt, Ozuna, and De Jong in the middle of that lineup. Not to mention Yadi Molina, who is back and, and catching in somehow only $2,900 on DraftKings. So I think that's a spot that I'll be staying away from. All right. The Giants, the Cubs. This should be a fun one. Tyler Beattie, 5,100. Cole Hamels, 7,800. Uh, we do not yet have uh, run totals because, of course, this is the night before. It's the Windy City projecting to be a 7 to 10 mile an hour wind out there to center field, looking like it's going to be in the mid 80s with a 70% humidity. That's some hitting weather there, Adam. But the price point and uh, the Giants' offense or lack thereof. Makes me consider in Cole Hamill at 7,800 right now. Yeah, Hamill's is one of the pitchers that I'm really interested in. It's like the wind's blowing out in Wrigley, but not expected to blow out too hard. So that's something to keep an eye on. If that wind picks up, then it does make Hamill's less appealing. But it's almost like he's priced for that. You know, not a ton of strikeouts on the Giants, but also not a very good offense. And Hamill's is a pretty good pitcher. You know, he comes in with a um, uh, Sorry, 49.4% ground ball percentage, which is actually pretty decent and higher than than I was expecting. But he also has solid strikeout stuff. Um, he's just should be more expensive than 7,800. All right. And then the Giants, reminder, this is uh, WRC+. Plus, so this is neutralized for their park factors, which definitely suppresses offense. They have the second worst offense in the league against lefties, 83 WRC+. Plus, so they score 17% or create runs 17% less than the average major league team that is also a nice bonus though for hamels uh they're middle of the pack with the 22.1 percent strikeout rate uh tyler Beatty, not the easiest of matchups going against the cubs uh potentially a late or a mid uh the eight o'clock uh slate play there for him i don't think i'd get there on the main slate I, with the wind blowing out and the heat and the cubs being the team he's going against adam uh yeah i the price tag is okay, but it's just a tough matchup here. You know, you, you have some good lefty power with Rizzo and Schwarber. You know, Hap has some power. So does Caratini. Hayward's a tough strikeout. And then the righties in the lineup are really good. Castellanos, Baez, and, and Bryant. So um, he's cheap, but I don't expect to get a lot. Yeah, if this game was in, uh, what, God, whatever their park is called, Oracle Park, I, I would consider it, Adam, just because I would think that he has a better chance of getting into double digits. I think the if you were per, if you were setting if I set the over under at nine and a half DK points for BD in this matchup, wh- which way would you go? At nine and a half. Nine and a half. Uh, probably under. Yeah. So not good times, uh, even with uh, just the fifty one hundred dollar price tag. Moving along to our next game. Oh, Brock Burke. I do not know much about him, but I do know about Andrew Heaney. Heaney has been uh, off of the. Let me spell his name right. He's been off of the injured list for a couple starts now. I wanted to see where his pitch counts were. Uh, he went 74 in that first one back, 90 in his last one. Uh, had a decent start there against uh, the White Sox. He lasted seven innings, did allow two home runs. No walks, though, six strikeouts. We do like to see that. He's 8,500. I'm going to bet we see about 85 to 90. be similar to his normal workload. I don't think we'll see him get up to 100. But uh, how do you feel about Heaney in the Texas Heat? A lefty going against Texas, though. It's not a a good park, obviously. Heaney does have good strikeout stuff. I think if you didn't have Cole Hamels at less and Jalen Beeks at the minimum and Aaron Sanchez, who obviously we haven't talked about yet, but Aaron Sanchez facing the Tigers, I would have some interest in Heaney. But um, with the slate being how it is, I don't think I'm going to go to this park. All right. That is absolutely fair. Do you, uh, did you know anything about Brock Burke? Tough matchup for him, of course, going against the Halos. But uh, is he a decent prospect or a no-name prospect? Um, I'm not sure. Let's see, So Angel's bottom five in strikeouts. Earn anything about him. Got in the minor leagues. It's like he's been about in the minors for about uh, six, 
se five seasons, it looks like. Uh, he has really not done anything of note. Um, he has pitched... Uh, this year he was at AAA Nashville. He went uh, started two, had two starts, went eight innings. He'd been at AA Frisco. Uh, he started nine games, uh, averaged about five innings per start. Uh, tail of the tape says 9.7 home runs, but you got to knock that down. He's probably projects out to be about a seven, home, uh, sorry, 9.7 strikeouts per nine. I'm going to project him down at like 6.5 because that's from AA all the way up here. To trip uh, to the the show, he is 23 years old. Just turned 23 at the beginning of August. Third round selection there from uh, Colorado Evergreen High School. That's it. That's all I got, Adam. Nothing exciting. Yeah, and obviously a tough park and a, a tough matchup. He's a lefty. If that helps, not really. Okay, let's see what else the cards have dealt us. Ah ha ha! Ronaldo Lopez, seven thousand going against the Twins. Wins one of the best uh, offenses in the league, pretty much top three in most categories. They are uh, carrying a 5.8 implied run total. On the other side, you have Michael Pineda, 8,900. So it's priced in this matchup here with the Chai Sox, but they have been uh, not scary is, is one word. Uh, Yolmer Sanchez, Matt Skoll, Adam Engel, Ryan Goins. These are not terrifying names. Uh, Tim Anderson, Jose Abreu. Oh, where's... Uh, what happened to Aloy Jimenez? Oh, there he is. He is going to be in the projected line. They're missing one other name. Who am I missing? Juan Moncada. Yeah, he's on the injured list. That's right. So not that scary. Could be scary going with Michael Pineda, but a 3.8 implied run total here. God, I'm going to actually consider Pineda. Yeah, so would I. Uh, the price tag is favorable or decent for the matchup. But again, like I, th I think that Hamels is probably a little bit better. I'd rather for sure roster $9,700 Sonny Gray. So I, I like Pineda more than I like Heaney, but still not sure I'll get to a lot. So interestingly enough, the White Sox actually above average from a WRC plus perspective against uh, righties. However, they do strike out the ninth most in the league with their active roster, 23.4%. Uh, for me, I think I still like the Twins bats going against Lopez. Lopez, I would probably consider at 7,000 against 15 of the 30 teams in the league. Twins, not really one of them. How do you feel about Lopez? Yeah, I think it's a pretty tough spot for him. Um, not a lot of strikeouts in the Minnesota lineup. Lopez has good strikeout stuff, particularly against right-handed hitters, but he gives up power to both sides of the plate, and the strikeout stuff's been pretty underwhelming to lefties. So dealing with guys like Kepler, Polanco, Rosario, Arias, who doesn't strike out, Castro, who has power, is not really where I want to be. All right, so that gets us to Houston and Detroit. Aaron Sanchez coming off a bummer of an outing in which he allowed four home runs to the Athletics in his last start. That one was in Oakland. Uh, six earned runs overall, three strikeouts, uh, two walks. Prior to that, he'd been really, really good and relatively discounted on DraftKings. He's back to 6800 which I think is a phenomenal price point for him going uh, into this matchup, considering that's, what, 5500 or less? That I'm doing the math wrong. 4900 or less than uh, Wade Miley was in this same matchup on Monday night. I do not see any reason to not go very, very strongly with Aaron Sanchez. Uh, the Tigers, 3.5 implied run total. Let that sink in for a minute. We've had three different teams well below a, uh, a four implied run total, and only one of them was named the Miami Marlins. What, wait, what? Well, I'm just, words are coming out of my mouth. I'm, I'm trying to read something and I'm just talking at them. Let me summarize. Why would we, would there be any reason not to load up on Aaron Sanchez against Detroit who has a 3.5 implied run total, which is the third lowest on the slate? Yeah, I think Sanchez is, is a really good player. Have you looked at what he has changed, if anything, since he has gone to Houston? His. He, he's throwing his sinker less. I haven't gone back to see what he did in the last start, which was a tough matchup against Oakland. But in his first start, according to Brooks Baseball, he didn't throw it at all. In the second start, he threw it about 13%. Um, that's a pitch that he should be throwing less, and he should be throwing more forcing fastballs and curveballs. So it's been good to see that. And then now you get back to a good matchup against the Tigers. All right. Let's go look at – I'm assuming Brendan McKay did something you didn't like. So, But let's go back here. 
and talk about Spencer Turnbull against Houston. That's enough for Spencer Turnbull. Moving on to our game in Arizona, Colorado Rockies with Kyle Freeland, who has been abysmal by all counts. Alex Young, 5,800 going against the Rockies, who are uh, horrible on offense when they are away from home. The roof will be closed for this entire homestand because, wait for it, it's nearly 110 degrees in Arizona right now. Alex Young, is he going to make the list as one of your uh, potential half-dozen cheap pitchers for Tuesday? It's an okay spot. Um, a lot, again, will depend on if Jalen Beeks is actually starting because it's tough to pay 1400 more for Young than for Beeks. But if Beeks isn't an option, then I become interested because it is a good pitcher's park um, outside of Arenado and Story. You don't really have right-handed power in that lineup. That one is, yeah, the, it's really down to those two guys. Nothing scary about them, but uh, how far, when will the talent run out for Alex Young? Second time through the lineup, or will he make a touch more? We will have to see. I, he's going to be on my short list. Definitely a uh, hard no on Kyle Freeland at 4,200. Uh, I, just, I can't see a reason why you'd want to go to him. So we got our last two games of the night, the double 10 o'clock. Our contest, you have Domingo Herman going into Oakland, taking on the A's along with Homer Bailey. Herman is 10,800, Bailey 7,100. I'm not really excited by either of these guys. Late slate only, I would land on the side of Herman, but uh, that is a tepid recommendation at best, and we have to choose two of the four pitchers. Uh, we'll get to the other two, but uh, what do you want to do with uh, the Yankees and athletics? Uh, not go to pitching. Um, Domingo yeah. Ramon is priced up, and Oakland, you know, not a good strikeout matchup. Um, Ramon's a really good pitcher, but it's just really tough to pay that price tag. And then for Homer Bailey, um, I've rostered him a lot this season, but he's not someone that I want to roster against the Yankees. Would you go to Ramon if he was like 8,200 on you? 88, well, I was going to say 8,800. Probably. 80, still prefer gray and i would still prefer like hamels and sanchez all right and he's uh he's 46 on yahoo we'll circle back on all the yahoo but it is it's he's okay price but not where we want to go after him final game of the night yet another team that has a less than four implied run total that would be the toronto blue jays who lose the designated hitter We'll have to see what's going on with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's uh, strained, I think it was his knee, ranging for uh, a ground ball that was on Saturday. Uh, you've got Sean Reed Foley, tough matchup, going against all those lefties of the Dodgers. He's 8,300. I'm not really interested in him. On the other side, final pitcher of the night, Clayton Kershaw. Adam, are you one of the people that thinks Kershaw is back? Yeah, he's his slider's been better. Now, granted, he has had a lot of really favorable matchups. This is another decent matchup against Toronto. Um, so it's tough to be, you know, really confident in the strikeout stuff. But um, his strikeout percentage over his last seven or eight starts is up over 30%. The slider movements looked a little bit different than earlier in the season, getting a lot more swings and misses on that pitch. He's been good this year anyway. It's just been a matter of the strikeout stuff. But if he's back to striking out 30-plus percent of hitters, then – uh, you know, he, he's obviously a really good play again. It's tough in tournaments on slates like this to pay all the way up a pitcher, but I do think Kershaw should be the highest or one of the highest, like, raw point projections. Yeah, and there's I don't see any reason why we would not come to that conclusion. Uh, looking at Yahoo for some of the prices, Kershaw, again, at the top, he's 53, Strasburg, 52, the Beebs, 50, Sunny Gray, 46. You taking that seven dollar discount to Sunny Gray over uh, Kershaw? Um, I'll take. I'll, how much was it? Seven dollars fifty three for Kershaw, forty six for Gray. Yeah, fifty three for Kershaw is really nice. It, it would really depend on the bats. Um, I mean, I, I love those. I love that salary on both guys. All right, we kind of mentioned Aaron Nola at forty three. A little tepid on that one. Uh, Michael Pineda at forty four. Would you? Look to either of those guys or Domingo Herman at 46. Um, I would take either of those guys. All right. Uh, Alex Young at 35, Cal Quantrill at 35, or Steven Matz at 33. Because our other pitcher is going to be Aaron Sanchez at 33. So we're only looking for our second pitcher here. <laughs> right. Um, I guess Quantrill. All right. And then uh, the next, oh, we're down in the scrub land here. 
Who's the, oh, Beaks at 27, Waka at 27, or Ronaldo Lopez, uh, Chris Archer at 30 and 30. Let's assume Beaks is starting. So Beaks at 27 or Archer at 31? Yeah, would be the two real choices. Um, Beaks. Okay. All Let's right. Yeah, and we'll, we'll give him 85 pitches. Let's quickly go look at past handles, see if anything stands out. As people have been saying it. Because we talk about so much, and a lot can change. But um, with the pitching, at least you can kind of know where you're going, if it's high, medium, or low. Kershaw at 12, Bieber at 11, or Sunny Gray at 10,004. Um, Gray. I agree with you on that one. It's close, but that $1,800 is really going to make a difference with the hitters. Uh, down in the mid tier, Sanchez at 85, Keichel at 78, or Archer at 87. Sanchez. Sanchez versus Gray, $2,000 difference. Depends on the bats because I like both guys. Uh, and then I'm scrolling down for some cheapies, not really seeing anybody that I would want to trust. Bundy at 68, Alex Young at 7. Bundy? I'd still rather just go with Aaron. Uh, Sanchez. Yeah, yeah, probably neither one, but. All right. Well, there we go. There are your choices. Got it done. 37 minutes. Hopefully you guys have made it safely to work. With that, you can follow Adam on a Twitter at ship my money DFS. I am at Emac DFS. And of course, it is Osmo underscore C O M. If you're listening to this before midnight, go to the Osmo underscore C O M pinned tweet. Follow the instructions. We are giving away $500 in prizes. Uh, we've got coaching sessions with Alex himself, we've got uh, subscriptions, etc. All you got to do is tweet and uh, answer the question that is on the pin tweet. What do you? What stands out to you with regards to Alex's season-long NFL draft ranking? Those are free, by the way. Uh, all you got to do is comment on what stands out to you. There is no wrong answer. There is no. The only wrong answer is to not play the game. With that, gamers, we're going to get on out of here, so good luck.